Yankees starting pitcher Jim Abbott was once quoted saying, never allow the circumstances in your life to become an excuse. People will allow you to do it. But I believe we have a personal obligation to make the most of the abilities we have. Abbott was born without a right hand. And the ground ball is short. Bellardi, he did it, he did it. No hitter for Jim Abbott. He was also quoted saying, I truly believe that difficult times and disappointments can push us to find abilities and strengths we wouldn't know existed without the experience of struggle. Well, for one of the newest relief pitchers donning the Yankees pinstripes, and one that has found some serious success with his unique pitch, the Slombio, his road to the show has been full of difficult times, disappointments, and adversity. This is New York Yankees relief pitcher Ian Hamilton. Ian logged his first career save in the major leagues the other week, and his journey up to this point is one that Yankee fans and fans of baseball in general need to know about. Swing and a miss, strike three, first career strikeout for Hamilton. But before we get into it, just a reminder that if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, if you're a fan of baseball, you know what to do. And this video is sponsored by myself, the Couch GM. During the day, I'm a full-time mortgage loan originator. By using myself, the Couch GM, you can hit a home run with your mortgage needs and maybe even get your favorite jersey in the process. The link to my lending website is in the description of this video or you can send me a message on my link tree. Now let's get into Ian's player profile. Ian grew up in Vancouver, Washington and ended up attending Skyview High School where he would play football and baseball. He says that his junior year he was probably throwing in the low 80s, as it turns out that he had a torn UCL, which would be treated using a platelet-rich plasma treatment during that next offseason. Ian had committed to Oregon State University his junior year, but after seeing the decline in velocity, the Beavers told him that he would have to find a new school. Ian says after his first time back the next season, he was throwing 90 to 92 miles an hour. His senior year, he would lead the Skyview Storm to their first state title in program history. He was their frontline starting pitcher as well as their center fielder, and he would post an 8-1 record with a 1.17 ERA and 78 strikeouts over 60 innings. He was voted by coaches statewide as the 4A Player of the Year, and he'd commit to playing baseball at Washington State University over in Pullman. When asked about his most inspirational person, he said it was his dad who taught him that he needed to work hard. His dad told him, people don't pay attention to lazy people. And Ian certainly was not lazy. I actually played baseball with him in high school and was a class ahead of him. He really was just one of those dudes that was bigger, stronger, faster than the rest of them. And we knew that he was gonna go do something special. His freshman and sophomore years in Pullman, he was the team's closer. And he needed just those two seasons to set the school's all-time saves record with 28 saves. Heading into his junior year, which would end up being his final year in college, he transitioned back to being a starting pitcher, and as their Friday night starter, he would lead the team in strikeouts as well as innings pitched. He would go on to be drafted by the Chicago White Sox in the 11th round of the 2016 MLB Draft. Ian would progress through the White Sox farm system over the next couple years as a relief pitcher, until late in the 2018 season, he would get the call. A theater class in college. That's agreement. To Reyes. 0-2 is in. Swing and a miss, strike three. First career strikeout for Hamilton. Ian would end up pitching in 10 games for the White Sox that year. Then, during spring training heading into the 2019 season, his misfortune started to stack up. Him and his fiance were down in Arizona getting ready for spring training when they were involved in a car accident. To quote Ian, he said, everything is okay. I got thrown around so I'm kind of stiff. My fiance was in the car and she got thrown around a little bit, bumped in the head, so we're staying low right now. He said it's a real bummer, not scary, just more aggravating. And after all, it was his agent's car, not his own, as he didn't have a car down in Arizona yet. Ian would head to the injured list to recover from shoulder discomfort that he experienced after the accident. However, once he was back, he got optioned to AAA, during which he would struggle on the mound, pitching to a 9.92 ERA over 16 games. He was battling some dead arm issues at the time. Another trip to the injured list should solve the problem. 
Then back to full health and about to make his return, he broke a pinky toe after slipping out of the hotel room chair. Then, two days later, he would hit rock bottom. Or more so, rock bottom would hit him. Ian was sitting on the top level of the first base dugout. He said he was pouring some seeds looking down just for a second and all of a sudden he heard look out. And as he looked up, the baseball was just feet away from his face. He says the ball bounced off the front of my lip and most of my upper teeth instantly hit the back of my throat. I coughed those up, one tooth got knocked back into my skull and opened up the whole roof of my mouth. There was just a lot of blood. My trainer just ran up and jammed a towel into my face to stop the bleeding. Ian's teammate and a catcher on the team, Sebi Zavala, said he kind of went down into my arms. He didn't get knocked out and was pretty calm the whole time. The first thing he said was, oh man, this is going to suck. So I knew he was going to be alright, I just didn't know how bad it was until later that night. Ian was awake for the entire 4 hour surgery as they worked to close off his upper lip and the roof of his mouth. Ian didn't sleep in the hospital that night, he slept on the couch in the Knights locker room with his trainer. Zavala said that's pretty on brand for the guy they called Hammy. Like I said, that guy's a crazy dude. <laughs> Ian said, I must have been half out of it because I kept asking the nurse if my teeth would grow back. Well, they certainly wouldn't. He had to sleep in a chair for the next week due to excruciating headaches. He threw up blood and he would end up having 8 surgeries total to repair his jaw, which now is made of steel. Thank you to Dylan Haw and Fan for the inside information on this injury. As you'd imagine, Ian would miss the rest of the 2019 season, and during the 2020 COVID season, he would end up making it back to the major leagues. 1-2. A lot of Tigers. He got him swinging, tipped into the glove. Ian would pitch in four games that year, which would be his last exposure in the White Sox system. That offseason, the Mariners would claim Ian off of waivers from the White Sox, bringing him back to his home state. At least, it would have. As just over a month later, the Philadelphia Phillies claimed Ian from the Mariners, who then, a little over a month later, dropped him off of their 40-man roster. The Twins would then claim Ian, and he would spend all of 2021 playing for St. Paul, which is the AAA affiliate for the Twins. All of this time still dealing with some of the effects of those headaches. In 2022, Ian would play a majority of the season in AAA, but in June, he would get the call again, pitching in one game for the Twins before being sent back down. In August, the Cleveland Guardians then traded catcher Sandy Leone to the Twins for Ian. He would finish out the remainder of the season in AAA for the Guardians. Over his 2022 season in AAA, he sported a 3.61 ERA, a 1.099 whip, with an 11.4 strikeouts per nine and a 3.6 walks per nine. The New York Yankees would then take their opportunity with Ian Hamilton that following offseason, signing him to a minor league deal, and Yankees pitching coach Matt Blake was a Cleveland scout when they traded for Hamilton, and Blake said that he was really excited when they signed him because he knew that he's got a really good arsenal. Ian would impress the Yankees during spring training as in 8 appearances, he gave up no earned runs, allowed a 192 batting average to batters with a 0.89 whip. The Yankees had some serious issues with their pitching health, both in the bullpen and the starting rotation, which helped clear some roster space for Ian. He would end up making the opening day roster for the Yankees, and he has not disappointed so far. And for him. And he strikes out Castellanos. So far this year for the Yankees, he's pitched 22 innings to the tune of a 1.23 ERA, a 1.09 whip, an opponent's batting average of 190, a strikeouts per nine of 12.27, and a 3.68 walks per nine. And now we have to talk about that pitch, the Slombio. Aaron Boone had talked this spring a lot and even before the game a lot about that slider changeup. I think he called it a Slombio. Just how would you describe that pitch? Uh, I think we're calling, uh, calling it a Slombio, but they like it, I like it, and we we'll keep throwing it. Why do you think you have so much success with it? Uh, it's just a little bit different than, I guess, like what people are expecting, I guess, and the spin's different, so just working. This is a tweet from his agent, Nick, and here's a video of the release point of that Slombio pitch. Also, why is it named Slombio? Well, it's a mix between a slider and a changeup. He grips it like a changeup, almost like a circle change, but with how it comes off of his hand, it has a cut to it. So when the batter sees the spin, they expect it to dive arm side like a typical changeup, but when it dives straight down or has a cut to it, it becomes a problem. 
It's interesting looking at the Savant page on this pitch because it does register as a slider due to that movement, but the horizontal movement that registers is only 1.4 inches of horizontal break, whereas it's 32 inches of vertical movement downward. So technically it's a diving slider with a change up spin. And he throws a Slambio about 53% of the time, his four seam fastball about 26% of the time, and that sinker about 20%. As for why it's named the Slambio, well, Combio is Spanish slang for changeup, and when you add slider to the Combio, it becomes the Slambio, which, as Nick says, is a unicorn pitch. You can see the changeup grip there, that Slambio that acts like a slider, looks like a slider. I've been throwing it since uh, high school. Yeah. And it has always been kind of weird? Oh, uh, yeah, it's done, it's had that same shape since high school, so. <laughs> How did you develop it in high school? I was just working on working on changeup, and then it just started cutting or sliding, I guess. So then just kind of stuck with that, and you know, it stuck. Uh, everywhere I've been, they've tried to uh, at least like manipulate it in some way, and then here they just kind of said, "Keep throwing it." So right, I like that. Taking a closer look at the grip on the Slambio, you can see here it's kind of a hybrid circle change grip. His ring finger and middle finger are set up like a four-seam fastball, and then instead of being a circle, his thumb is firmly on the ball and then that index finger kind of wraps around the top of that horseshoe there. As I mentioned at the beginning, he was given the opportunity to log his first career save the other week against the AL East leading Rays, and he took advantage. What does it mean to you that your manager has the confidence to put you out there against one of the best offenses in the American League? That was, you know, that was a good, good praise right there. Kind of unexpected, too. You come into spring training trying to just, you know, earn a spot on the roster. Did you ever anticipate that you'd be closing for the New York Yankees? No, I didn't. But just kept working and just keep, keep working and keep going. At what point did you realize that you might be pitching the ninth? Uh, when they called down in the ninth, <laughs> I was like, dang. So it was, I was surprised, for sure. What has this season meant to you so far after you've been through so much injury-wise and to come here and be part of the Yankees, contribute to this team after everything you went through? All right, uh, it's huge, honestly. Just trying to get a chance to win, you know? it's That's pretty much the biggest part. Just, like, there's a real, real opportunity to win here. So that's pretty much the biggest thing that I have. Ian Savant Page is littered in red. He's in top percentiles for average exit velocity, expected batting average, K percentage, chase rate, hard hit percentage, expected slugging, expected ERA, barrel percentage, and whiff percentage. Ian is the type of guy that's laser focused on his job at hand, not taking into account any outside noise, he's not on social media at all, and really his makeup is perfect for playing in the Bronx. Ian was put on the 15 day injured list with a right groin strain the other day, but he'll be back at some point around mid-June. So Yankees fans, baseball fans, be on the lookout for Ian Hamilton, as he's a guy with his story you want to get behind. Thank you for watching, and for more baseball content throughout the season, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give it a share. All right, guys, goodbye, Zondi. Don't forget it.